Taiwan special, episode one for this week, Okinawa. When I first came to Taiwan, it was because I wanted to go to Okinawa. And I was researching the English teaching market there in Okinawa. And I, I decided that there wasn't enough good uh, English teaching jobs in Okinawa. It was difficult. I remember someone someone said, how do I find English jobs in Okinawa? And someone re replied, you're trying to find English teaching jobs in the most difficult place to get English teaching jobs. Interesting factoid, the average casual English ability of the Taiwanese is better than the casual average English ability of the Japanese in Okinawa. If I go to a local convenience store in Taiwan, they know how to say hello. Uh, they know how to say how much money. They know how to say thank you. They know how to say a couple things in English. If I go to Okinawa, they don't know anything. They have to sit there and work and think just to say one of the numbers among many numbers in the price. Uh, three hundred five. No, uh, 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 nine, you know, like that's okay. You know, like how they would in Taiwan, they'd say, uh, $309, you know, they'd say that in Taiwan. Okay. So there's the difference. Okay. Um, so Taiwan's English is better and it's easier to find an English teaching job in Taiwan. That's interesting. You would think that the place that has the worst English would, you know, be easier to find an English teaching job. Or then again, maybe it shouldn't be a surprise that the place that has the worst English is the place where it's more difficult to find an English teaching job. And yes, uh, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, this picture behind me is Cape Manzamo. And uh, yes, I did take that picture with my phone and I'm very happy that I did. Um, Oh man, that was, that was an exciting, that was an exciting journey. I talked about it in the podcast weekly, uh, which it would have been yesterday. This, um, but I, you know, it's worth it to go. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a, like a national park type of a deal. You just show up. There's a, there's this little path. You walk down this way, you walk out that way. Uh, I was there on the day when it was the, the emperor's last day. Japan has a new emperor. And the day that I was here at Cape Manzamo was the last day of that emperor. There probably will not be another emperor change in my lifetime. Uh, maybe one, maybe one other emperor change. So that was interesting. Um, the, uh, no, the old emperor was old and he abdicated. He says, I'm old. I, I'm, I'm retiring. I'm done. I'm let my son take over. And, and the big thing, the emperor in Japan is more symbolic I think the emperor has less power than the queen does in England. Um, the queen, the queen has power, but she 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 stays off. She it, it's hands off. She lets the people govern themselves because that's the most justice. I think that's the idea of the constitutional monarchy. Um, I mean, like World War Two, uh, England in, in, well, Britain was being destroyed by Nazi Germany in World War Two, and the king stepped in and said. Uh, I don't want Chamberlain to be prime minister anymore. I want uh, Winston Churchill to be prime minister. And then that changed everything. And uh, they worked with America and uh, we won the war. So that's, you know, the constitutional monarchy is kind of a nice check with government. Uh, as, you know, in America, we have the electoral college. There's another check that's, that's there and in place. Um, okay, so I don't, I don't want to d d debate uh, d democratic governance and constitutional um, re republic tactics, but um, there was a new emperor in Japan. Okay, so I'm going all around Japan. <sighs> One of the I, I went to Hacksaw Ridge. I, I don't know if that means anything. Um, yes, I climbed to the top of Hacksaw Ridge. They have sweet clover there just like they do in America. No, Okinawa is not tropical. It's almost tropical. We're talking about Miami. You know, the Tropic of Cancer is south of Florida. I climbed to the top of Hacksaw Ridge and I ate one sweet clover. Yes, I picked it and I ate it. Um, 
A lot of people died there, but I saw it. Yes. And just being there changed me. I'm bicycling around Okinawa. I was bicycling around for 12 hours. And I went through the mountains. I, I, went, over, I went up over a mountain pass. Uh, I went, uh, I bicycled to Cape Manzamo. I bicycled past a military base. Uh, well, several. I mean, they're, they say there's six military bases in Okinawa. Um, uh, six military bases? Or six, six visual, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get into speculating out loud too much. The military has stuff that they don't tell us, but what we know about Okinawa is six military bases. That's, that's the public knowledge of it. And I have no reason at all. I, I, I didn't meet anybody on the street who talked to me. I've never had any friend. Well, I know something. I've had nothing, none of that to suggest anything otherwise, other than my creative imagination. But I'll tell you what, I certainly do hope, I certainly do hope that it's not just simple, simply six military bases sitting there in Okinawa. I certainly hope that there's more to the story because the military should have military secrets. Um, I think that's true of every military. But if six bases or, or whatever, whatever it is, I, you know. Um, no, I, I met this English teacher lady who was teaching English on a military base. Like there are a lot of civilian jobs on those military bases. That's an interesting fact. Uh, there, uh, like, like if you go to Okinawa and teach English, you might be teaching on base. You might be teaching to, uh, what do they call them? The, the military brats, I think is, is what they call the military kids. Um, so Okinawa is a wonderful place to relax. It's not lonely but it's not high paced, stressful, busy. You go to Hong Kong, even Taiwan, it's either lonely or stressfully busy. Same with Vietnam, uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, you know, you go there, although Kuala Lumpur is a little bit more, more laid back. But Okinawa, it's not lonely, but it's not stressful, busy. And it's definitely Asia. And they are so Japanese. I, you know, everything they say about the Japanese is, is true. Uh, everything you see, the, the, the culture that comes through in, in the, the cartoons, it's absolutely true. It's lovely. It's adorable. Um, it's healthy to have the exposure. If you're looking for a place to go on vacation, go to Okinawa. Um, uh, I'm contemplating uh, taking Avenue Guru stuff and, and gui taking people on guided tours if they go through an Avenue tour uh, or Avenue Guru th process. But I don't think I'm going to be doing tours just for hire. Uh, but you could go to Okinawa, do it. Absolutely. Now, what I got from that. While I was in Okinawa, my YouTube channel was, in Taiwan was taking off. So I'd, I'd, I'd go here, I'd check my phone, 100 new subscribers. I'd, I'd get on a bicycle ride up here. 20 new subscribers and a thousand more views on my viral video. And then I'd bicycle over there, go over here, really hot sunburn, stop, check my phone, another hundred subscribers and another 3000 views on the video. So I'm in Okinawa while that's happening. And I'm, I'm here at these places where Americans fought and died. And so did Japanese. And I, I, the Japanese, I mean, are really friendly and they're happy to talk to the Americans. They say Americans are a friend, you know, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. It kind of made me get a little bit more serious. It made me reevaluate podcasting in general. And I'm just a little more no nonsense. I'm going to keep this podcast going. I've got 60 loyal subscribers and I love you. I really do. I wish I heard from you more, uh, cause I hear from you zero, but that's okay. You, 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 I, I hear the important part, which is that you stay tuned. So, it, it really, it, I mean, I was already headed towards being more and more no nonsense, but I think I just got more no nonsense because I see the YouTube channel that's working. I, I don't have to guess anymore. I've never tried to be a YouTuber anywhere else. I was just a writer and a podcaster with a YouTube channel. I wasn't trying to be a YouTuber. In Taiwan, I tried to be a YouTuber with this YouTube channel with the Taiwan market and I did it and it's working. 
and it was, a, it was an idea that I've had for a long time. I just finally did it. Uh, I started it a, a few months ago when they rejected my application. And because uh, I said, you know, I applied and they should have approved it by now, which means it's fine for me to start 10 years. I can do a YouTube channel in another country if I've been there 10 years and if I've applied for the residence, whether, you know, they had the maturity to, to deal with it or not. I'm going to talk about that later on at Taiwan Special this week, but I'm going to talk more about the YouTube channel next time. But I'll tell you, I, I want to close with this, even though I'm kind of over time. The big thing, if you've waited this long, the big thing I noticed about, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say this. I've kind of rambled on about my life here. And that's kind of what talk radio and podcasting is supposed to sort of be like. This is a conversation in the background while you do your work somewhere else. That's what podcasting is supposed to be. It's supposed to be talk radio that you can take with you. You're not supposed to stop and listen to this stuff. And this is something that's very valuable and good. It's something smart people do. They don't have music in the background. They have something that's feeding them new and interesting ideas in the background. And it's conversive. So you can just sit it on, turn it on, let it play, do your work. And it's casual and you can just kind of go. That's, that's what talk radio is supposed to be. And I'm not, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to do podcasts like a lot of people do, where you stop here and do music and go production and add all kinds of cute little sounds and noises. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I, I like the talk radio genre for podcasts. I, I just, I, I, I really, I think that the production podcast where you've got like a production flow where it takes 10 hours to make like a 10 minute podcast because you've got to add all this stuff. And you've got to do all this planning instead of running it like talk radio. You've got a personality who already knows what he does. He gets on the mics and spits it. And whether you like to admit it, he just uh, does it uh, better than uh, the other uh, podcasters. Uh, see, that's talk radio genre. And I think that the music production type of podcasting stuff is trying to target people who don't want podcasts. They're, they're trying to take a podcast and make it a not podcast for people who don't want podcasts. That's what I think those are. I'm sorry. I'm an audio talk radio guy. I could have had a career in talk radio. And uh, just life took a different course. I, I might, that'd be kind of interesting to see. You know, one day would somebody approach me for talk radio? Hmm, that'd be curious. It'd be neat to see. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow uh, in, in the when I talk about the Taiwan channel going and the Google ads thing. But... If uh, I, I'm going to continue to do this, I'm going to continue to save Easter eggs for the end. Well, I'm getting here to the end of the segment. And as I get to the end of this segment, I'm going to talk about what I didn't talk about before. And I'm going to keep doing that. If you listen this long, you're going to get stuff at the end. While I was in Okinawa, I noticed something about the military bases. You're going, you're going around and I, 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 you, know, you can't take pictures of the bases. That's understandable. Um, it's tempting to, wow, a military base. I love the military. I want to take a picture. And it's like, oh wait, no, I can't do that. Um, these military bases in Okinawa are enormous. They've got satellite dishes larger than multi-million dollar buildings. Uh, like, like in Chicago, it's a satellite dish. And a building smaller than the satellite dish would sell in downtown Chicago for millions and millions of dollars. And they've got like two or three satellite dishes like this all next to each other. Huge, enormous radar balls that would make the Cerebro version one uh, look like an ant. Uh, for those of you who like X-Men and watched uh, X-Men, uh, I don't know, for X-Men, the first Cerebro. What was it? Uh, first class, I think it was. Okay. So... We've got, um, we've got this fantastic, amazing set of military bases in Okinawa. And it was scary for me to walk around and see how big this is. I, I don't mean like I felt bad, but it's like, oh my goodness. Like it was, it was awesome and terrible the, you know, like, like that type of a scary, um, I look at this. And I'm thinking to myself, no wonder China's alarmed. China for years didn't have the tech to see what our military bases in their backyard were like. Um, I'm not against the military base being there. 
I'm looking at this and I'm saying, no wonder America put this here. Because China's going to act that way. America knew what China was for years. That's why America was smart enough to put stuff like this here. And no wonder China doesn't, isn't happy with America because America was smart enough to put stuff like that there. I'd love to see a day when America doesn't need to, but that day's not now. Trump said something similar about nukes in his State of the Union address. He said, I, I, there's a day coming. I hope there's a day when we don't need nukes, but we're not there yet. So we need to be strong. And I'd, I'd love to have that taken down, but we're not there yet. And right now we need bases like Okinawa. I originally wanted to go teach in Okinawa, but friends told me to go to Taiwan and it's been 10 years and I finally got to the island that I wanted to go to. I'm happy I'm in Taiwan. I made the right decision. Life took the right course for me. This picture behind me, Kate Manzamo, was one of the pictures that I used to motivate myself that I would be able to get over to Asia. It took me time. It was difficult, but I got here. Motivational pictures matter. They are useful. They are good things. This military base stuff in Okinawa. Um, America's military is incredibly strong. Just from what I saw, planes taken off all the time, stuff doing routine stuff all the time. You know, you, you, can't, you can't bicycle five minutes without seeing military stuff, U.S. military stuff. If China attacked Taiwan, I think that Okinawa could respond single-handedly and end it. I'm just guessing from what I saw, just the size and seriousness of these military bases in Okinawa. China knows the size of these military bases. They probably had spies walking the streets. They probably had little light aircraft. Play I mean, you know, China's not stupid. I can't believe of all things, China is all focused on Taiwan. China wants to invade Taiwan. They've said so. This is not a theory. Everyone knows this. Everyone. China says it. China wants to invade Taiwan as a means of forcing Taiwan to go back under Chinese control. And that is their number one priority. I can't believe it. I'm utterly speechless. Okinawa is just, it's not even a hop, skip, and a jump. It's just half of a hop away from Taiwan. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm quite, I mean, look, the Tainan Airport, Tainan is the South City in Taiwan. It was the original capital of Taiwan. The Tainan Airport was the first international airport in Taiwan. It, it, it's kind of like, Tainan is kind of like Traver, what Traverse City is to Michigan. Lansing's the capital. Grand Rapids is, is a big main city. Detroit's the big one. Traverse City is this, this alternate, nice, paradise-type city. Traverse City. Tainan had the first international airport, has two landing strips side by side. That was the airport base that America used in the Vietnam War. When we had airstrikes in Vietnam, those planes were going in and out of Tainan. I've flown out of that, that airport. It's been tempting for me to take pictures of the F-16s taxiing on the runway right beside me. I'm in my airplane. There's the F-16 over there. And we're both taxiing right next to each other. That is a thrill for an American. You want to talk about an air show. I'm living this stuff. I'm seeing it. And as I'm walking around these American military bases in Okinawa, I think Okinawa is closer to Taiwan than Taiwan's Tainan airport was close to Vietnam. If Tainan can support air raids in Vietnam, 
Okinawa would have no problem supporting help for Taiwan. And China thinks that Taiwan is the threat? <laughs> that is not a military decision. China wanting to go after Taiwan is not responsible military strategy. China wanting to go after Taiwan is all about pride and shame. That's all. It is not militarily wise or scrupulous. If China is all bent out of shape over Taiwan, they're dumb. Their main target, China's main target should be Okinawa. That's what they should be talking about. That's what they should be complaining about. I mean, I would think, I, I, I don't agree politically, I don't agree with that, but from a military, from mili like a strategy perspective, I would think that China's, you know, target in the newspapers, in negotiations, in what we want to see in the world would be to get the Americans out of Okinawa. But instead, they're all focused on Taiwan? On Tai what? If China attacked Okinawa, I'm just totally guessing from how awesome I think America's military is and from the size of the satellite dishes and the number of bases I saw. That's it. Complete guessing from my public knowledge walking the streets. I would guess if China decided to attack Okinawa after a year, China might be able to land troops on the beach without reinforcements. Without, without Okinawa receiving reinforcements from America, after a year, China might be able to land troops on the beach. And then they would be landing troops on the beach who would be landing to go immediately to their graves for another year before they could even stay on the beach and hold something. Two years before they could put a little flag way out by the water edge. And then they only have a flag at the water edge. I think that's what's on Okinawa. Just, just being a military fan, my dad being a military man, from what I see the size of satellite dishes, Okinawa is powerful. If China attacks Taiwan, not Okinawa, but Taiwan, they don't stand a chance. China doesn't stand a chance because that big, enormous, powerful military base cluster up in Okinawa could respond and they wouldn't have to even defend themselves because they wouldn't be the ones under attack. My conclusion from all this, if China wants to go after Taiwan and fight the war that would be losing, the Chinese military minds are idiots. They are really stupid. And if China decides to start something, I think that the response, the humanly responsible thing to do would be to teach him something. Wow. First trip to Okinawa. That's what I thought. See you tomorrow.